Hello and welcome to this video on SLA management for advanced learners. In my previous video, we talked about how to create SLAs, what are SLAs, and how do they apply in real business challenges. And in this one, we're going to take it up level. But what exactly are our requirements from our business side? We're going to see it now. Before I start, I will do a small refresher. I'll create a case and see how SLAs are applied. So I will click on create new case from here. Um, and I'm in my customer service hub app, so this is important. And I will say, I have an order issue for which a customer called me. They were having some ordering issues. And the customer was Coffee Lab ABJ. These two information are more than enough to create a case indicated by the asterisk. And when I click on save, some SLAs will start to run. All right, so I see that now that we have created the case, we see these two things, and these are our SLAs. The first SLA tells me that I need to respond in, in one minute, and the second one says I need to close this case in two minutes. And if I don't, then it will fail. I chose this small time on purpose to explain to you the behavior of what happens if an SLA expires and what are the other constraints and things attached to it. To see more in detail what these SLAs entail, I will click on the SLA section and here you see it also indicates that there is a failure time and a warning time test. And these are some two very essential properties of SLAs because they remind the agent, all right, at this time, I'm going to warn you. And at this time, the SLA is going to fail. So which means the agreement that we have made with our customer that I will resolve this case in a certain amount of time fails at this time. And this is what we as an agent or we as an organization need to track and stay on top of. So what, what does help? Sometimes when you are in engagement uh, or you may have a requirement, uh, um, the requirement would say, before my SLA expires, I would like to warn my agents, all right, you have so much time left to resolve this case. Or by the way, this is reaching um, non-compliance, so you should really take care of this case now. Right? What the functionality does now on the setup we have done is, is nothing but it shows you this timer on a case level. So I would not be notified if something um, expires or if a case expires or if or if it really reaches the warning time as well, right? So in this, and this is what I'm going to use to connect to, to the next requirement. What if we want to send notifications or a Teams message to the agent reminding them, hey, uh, by the way, you need to quickly have a look at this case because it has already, uh, it is approaching non-compliance. And these are the two terms that Microsoft has also coined to, to refer to these Status is. Approaching non compliance is basically the warning time, and when it reaches non compliance, that's failure. So that's what we're going to understand. One more time failure is reached non compliance, and warning is approaching non compliance. To refresh your memories, what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to SLA management and we're going to configure this SLA to not only show us this timer, but also whenever it approaches warning to send me a Teams message, and when it fails, then also send uh, me a message. So I go to Customer Service Admin Center. You can also navigate by clicking on this app and then clicking on Customer Service Admin Center. I've kept both the tabs open for the sake of convenience. And here I can look for um, service terms. And here I have my service level agreements. I'll make it a bit bigger so it's easily visible for you all. And when I click on Resolve By, um, and this is the SLA that I've configured, I will deactivate it because now I need to edit it. And you cannot edit it without deactivating it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change one of the SLA items. Okay? So the change for notifications need to be done on every SLA item. So if you see the warning time and failure time is two minutes, because we're going to see how this works. In normal use cases, 
it can be multiple days, but then we would not be able to test and see it on the fly. So that's why for the sake of showing it to you, I made it one or two minutes so that we can immediately create case and immediately see how the notifications do work. Okay, when you click on that specific SLA KPI item, I have the option to scroll all the way to the bottom and click on configure actions. And what it does is when you click on configure of action, it opens up a Power Automate flow. So what this basically means is every KPI item, if I go back and if I click on this KPI item, every KPI item is linked to a unique Power Automate flow, right? So when I clicked here, it opened this Power Automate flow. And what it says is these are the two steps that Microsoft by default configures for you. So I'm going to make it a bit bigger so it's easier to, to see. The first, it says do not delete because this is the trigger. So whenever it reaches compliance or non-compliance or approaches non-compliance, the flow will basically trigger. And what it will do is, and that's why you see this switch condition. And the switch condition basically says, depending on what the current state of my SLA KPI is, if it's non-compliant, then you can do the following action, which is blank. If it's succeeded, you can do this action, also blank. And if it's non-compliant, do it here. So non-compliant is your failure, succeeded is your success. And near non-compliance is basically your warning, right? So for our KPI item, we have set up warning for one minute. So whenever it goes on warning, it will execute the actions that you will configure on the near non-compliance. If it goes for failure after, so if it's only two minutes, then it goes to the non-compliant. And Microsoft basically per SLA KPI item already has this sort of a basic flow already made for you to add steps. So what we can do now here is we can say, we can add an action. Here you can send an email or a Teams message. So I'm gonna quickly show you how we can send a Teams message. So I say Teams, and here I have uh, the Teams connector. And within this, I have a lot of options. So I will say message, and then I say post a message in a chat or a channel. And this is the action we're gonna use. And we're gonna post it as a flow box because we want to post it to an individual user. And here we'll select chat with Flowbot, wherein, which this basically means, I'm gonna initiate a new chat for, for user slash users um, using a Flowbot. And here I can specify the recipient. So here I will say, so yes, Monday, and I will select this. So I'll send a message to this user. And then I'll say, uh, hello, user, your case is reaching non-compliance. Please pay attention to the case and resolve it as soon as possible. Right? And in the same way, I'll just do one thing, I'll go here and I'll say copy to my clipboard and I'll add the same action here as well. And what I will do is, oh, so it's, it's not possible, so I'll just create one more. I'll say, now I know, message, and then I say post a message in a Teams chat. I will do the same options and I will enter the same name. And I will say, hello, your case has been flagged as SLA failure. Please consider it critical and close and resolve the case as ASAP. And then we have everything configured here. 
for now, for the sake of the exercise, and to keep it simple and straightforward, um, we're going to use hard-coded values like we saw. But it's very easy to also parameterize the recipient to pick that up from the SLA KPI instance and use also more case details to fill, us in, fill it in and also provide the Teams user with a link to the case. So all of that is definitely possible, but then this becomes um, a video on Power Automate. So probably I will make another videos on how to do advanced parameterization or parameterize your steps. Um, but yeah, this is more to explore the possibilities and to see what really happens as a behavior. For succeeded, it doesn't matter. I can also post a message saying, uh, good job. But for now, I'm just gonna skip that because these are the most important conditions that sometimes require follow-ups or, or actions. So I've used a Teams message, but you could always use, you can send an email and you can put notifications or send an email using Outlook or any other connectors. All right, so then I will save my flow. It says it's saving. It's saved. I go back and then I will go back here as well. And then I will now, I've configured my SLA, so I'm gonna activate it now. For now, I've configured only this one SLA item, but the same step needs to be repeated for all the SLA KPI items if you want to have notifications sent for each of the items. Okay, and now we can set it as default. Now that our SLA configuration has been done, we move on to our cases and we're gonna create a new case. And this time I'm gonna say order issue two and we select the same customer. And when we save, we will see that our uh, SLA has start running. And for this one in particular, we have set up two messages to be received. One we receive as warning when it reaches, completes one minute, and the other one when it completes two minutes. So that is also visible here for resolve by, for, for this high paying customer, this is what the SLA time has been set up. Okay. Um, now that we've seen this, what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna pull out my Teams chat as and when I receive the message. Um, what's also important for you to realize that these SLA items, not all of them may require you to send actions, but in a, in a real life, business do request you to send an email or a Teams message or auto notification of any sort. You could also send an in-app notification as well, which would appear here when enabled. So I also have a different video on how to enable in-app notifications, then you can also have that. And I hear a ping, which says that, yes, uh, I received a Teams message. Hello user, your case is reaching on compliance. But you could also make it more action oriented where they have, as I mentioned, you have the option to just also provide the link so that user can directly click here and do some follow-ups. But you could also, yeah, uh, escalate it to the manager, CC the manager, send an email, anything that the business requires as a, as a good action, we can execute all of them. So that was for today's session. In our next session, we're gonna talk about how to send emails using the email address of the queue without having to add any security roles or puzzling with them. Uh, I hope this session was helpful for you. If there are any suggestions or any things that you would like to ask or any content you would like me to, to talk about, feel free to put your comments. I hope it was uh, uh, fun and also uh, informative for you and happy learning.